But after the unboxing, I noticed this little critter on the macroalgae. After asking around, it turns out it's a sea cucumber. <laughs> Hey guys, so it has been 8 days since the unboxing and I just wanted to give you guys a really quick update. Everyone pretty much adjusted. There's some questions that you guys have been asking me and I feel like I need to address those. So last time I added anything to this tag, I added some corals. Let me show you guys the corals really quick. They've actually been doing really well. And here we have these beauties. I feel like it started to grow already, like the green is definitely expanding. As you can see, there's no corals in there and that's because I well, some of them I rehomed and some of them my big hermit crabs ate. This is just sad. You murdered it. Like, I saw it happen. So the bigger hermit crabs, like this guy right here and this one, they ate like the softer corals. I saw them eat some zoas. So I caught them eating, I think it was two different frags. My only options were take out the crabs put them in the sump, put them somewhere else, or take the coral out. And I've become really attached to these crabs. They're my first inhabitants in here, so I didn't want to like get rid of them. Hey bud, are you okay? You look a little stuck, like you're having a hard time. <laughs> I think his shell is like stuck in the sand. <laughs> Alright little dude, I believe in you. You got this. You can turn it around on your own, right? <laughs> If you need a little help, let mama know, okay? All right. <laughs> How did that even happen? <laughs> well, I guess this is a good learning opportunity for you guys who don't really understand how hermit crabs grab their shells. So those two back legs are the strongest out of all their limbs. They literally hang on to the shell always. There you go. All right. <laughs> wow, you're really strong. <laughs> Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> I love ya. Oh, hi. Look, you guys. He's waving at us. <laughs> Ugh, I love these guys. Look at that cute little face. Like, how could you not fall in love with that? I don't care if you're a coral murderer. Like, I forgive you and I would never rehome you because you're my baby. So I rehomed the coral. I gave them away to someone else in the hobby. And so this is no longer a reef tank in the making. I don't know how many of you guys have noticed, but I've only been calling this a saltwater tank. That's because it will no longer be a reef tank. I still do want a reef tank, um, it's just not gonna be this one, so future plans. So no corals in here. I guess that's kind of a good thing because when I was trying to pick out like what I wanted to have in here, like I was very limited to what was reef safe and what wasn't. Actually, these hermit crabs I was actually told were reef safe after they were eating my coral. Um, I did more research and it turns out this species in particular um, supposedly is reef safe when they're smaller. These guys are humongous now. When I got them, they were a lot smaller. They've definitely put some size since they've been here with me. So because they're so humongous, they can really do a lot of damage. Like they're actually always knocking down the rocks. Like I don't know how many of you guys have noticed the rockscape has changed and it's always changing because they're just constantly knocking down rocks like uh, I try and rearrange them so that they don't knock them down anymore but they they just do it, that's what they do they're just really big heavy animals and it's normal okay let's see what it says here it seems like a legit page Okay, thin striped hermit crabs, that's what these are. Down here, description, it says, the thin striped hermit crab is good at removing hair, at blah, 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 no, that's not true, no. They make a lot more mess than they clean. I would not consider these guys cleanup crew. <laughs> it can grow large enough to inhabit a four inch shell, making it one of the larger algae eating hermits. While it will not eat your corals, <laughs> 
it may attack snails for their shells. When it grows to full size, it may become a threat to lose rock work. Well, ain't that the truth? <laughs> Tank size for a critter like this will largely depend on the structure of it. For example, they would do fine in a 10 gallon species only hermit tank. Oh my god, no. I would not put these guys in a 10 gallon. Like, they're way too big for a 10 gallon tank. Okay, that just goes to show you shouldn't believe everything on the internet. So because I'm not shopping for reef safe animals, um, it actually really opens up my options to what I can put in here. And I wasn't sure if I wanted like predatory fish or like just one really big but awesome looking fish or a community type setup. But in the end, I decided to go with a community type setup. I want a little bit of everything, you know? I want the invertebrates, I want the fish. I want a lot of movement, a lot of life. So that's why I picked what I picked. So I'm actually really happy with the new inhabitants and I'm really happy with the seller. The quality is amazing and I'm very happy with this transaction. The only downside is that they hide a lot and that's perfectly normal. Their nature is to hide a lot in caves. I purposely left a lot of little caves and like gaps between some of the rocks and stuff so that there would be plenty of hiding places for them. So I did a really good job at that because I never see all of them at once. They're never really out in the open, so I don't really see them much except like during feeding time. So here I have a octopus tentacle, some shrimp, and fish fillet. Sometimes I use different kinds of seafood. I don't use like the same thing every time. I usually just get whatever's on sale at the time. What I usually do with this is I take some scissors and I literally just cut everything up into little tiny pieces, which is very tiring and time consuming, but I like this better than like using the blender or like a food processor because I get different sized pieces. I get some really tiny ones for the really tiny inhabitants and I like to leave some bigger chunks in there so that I can hand feed some of the animals. So here's everything all nice and chopped up. Afterwards, I just give everything a good mix, just making sure everything is incorporated together. And I divide them up into little baggies. Ziploc bags are great, you know, you can open and close them repeatedly. This food lasts me a really long time. And I feed this to like some of my other animals, not just the inhabitants in this aquarium. So I freeze the bags and I only add a little bit in each bag. And then I squeeze out the air and, you know, flatten everything out I like to make sure it's not too thick that way even if I freeze this I can easily snap off a piece and yeah let's go ahead and feed some of the animals <laughs> I feed them this um, mostly, but I do supplement with commercial foods. I give them a lot of different things. I like to make sure I vary on my animals' diets. So one of the brittle stars is back there, and I dropped some food, and it landed pretty close, but I don't know if he'll find it. I think he definitely senses it because he's getting closer to it. So I dropped another one like closer to him. I want to make sure it finds its food. <laughs> I don't want it to like starve or anything. I see its tentacles moving, so it definitely knows there's food present. Um, I'm wondering if he's gonna grab it or like what. I've never seen these guys eat, so I don't know how this is supposed to go down. Oh my god, you guys! I missed it, but it grabbed it! <laughs> it wrapped like its tentacle around it and then it just like pulled it towards its mouth and if you guys don't know, their mouths are located like under their I guess you could call that their belly. It just like pulled it towards its belly and now I guess it's eating it. This is really awesome. Feeding these guys is really something. And here's some of my other children. <laughs> there's Mr. Krabs up there. There's the snail. There's the other snail. There's Buddy. Well, hello there, Mr. Patrick. Where are you going? He spends a lot of time just climbing up the sides of the glass. It's really something. You know what? I'm gonna grab my clip-on macro lens and let's get some really awesome macro action of how he climbs up the glass. You guys, look at this. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Well, since you finally reached the top of the tank, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop some food in front of you. I want to make sure you eat. There you go. Yummy. 
I think I gave you a humongous piece and you're probably not gonna finish it, but eat as much as you want. So he pulled the food close to his mouth and he's actually eating now, believe it or not. Like we can't really see anything happening, but he's eating, so that's good. All right, you guys, so it's been three hours and he's still eating. The ones that I do see a lot are the orange starfish and the hermit crab. They're extremely social, they're all over the tank, so I guess that's good, right? But till I finally add fish in here, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of movement yet. Oh, and the macro algae that was here um, is in the sump. For the same reason that I had to rehome the coral, it's not that they were eating it, my really big hermit crabs were just like tearing it apart, not purposely but while they were crossing some of the rocks it would like slip and hang on to it a few times they actually took it out of there and it was just like floating in the tank so i had to move it to the sump there's actually a little piece there that they broke off and it was just left there so that's how things are going here oh hi look you guys i found a polar bear a polar bear fluff ball <laughs> you remember the people <laughs> She's like in my feet and I almost like stepped on her. Let me like comfort her and let her know that I love her. <laughs> She's like growing. Like look at how big she is already. I told you to stay small forever and ever. <laughs> and here's Nolan. I don't want you guys to think that I love her more than him because I show her and not him. Um, no, I love them equally. So originally I purchased these from the seller. So I was really excited for this one, right? <laughs> so I completed the purchase, I made my payment, and the seller was packaging my order. And then I get a text from him and he just basically informs me that that really awesome looking starfish that I was really excited about is not available. Is not available. the seller's son sold that awesome looking starfish my starfish <laughs> and forgot to tell his dad you know the seller so my starfish was gone like someone else had it <laughs> that really sucked instead of asking like for that money back i just told the seller like you know what just send me anything else like surprise me he sent me the eight little hermit crabs so that's why those happen. I actually wasn't really looking into getting more hermit crabs. But now that they're here and they're just like so active, they're all over the place, they add a lot of movement. So now I'm actually really happy that that happened. Oh, and the seller actually sent me a lot of freebies. Like that's awesome. He sent me one free emerald crab because I only paid for one and there was two. He sent me the macro algae for free. He sent me a free orange starfish because I only ordered one and there was two. So he sent me all these free things and not because I'm me. He actually has no idea that I purchased from him and that I'm a YouTuber and that I do these unboxing videos that get thousands of views. So it was completely selfless. It wasn't to make him look better. I actually made my order under someone else's name because I didn't want him to know that I was purchasing from him. You know, I didn't want any special treatment or anything. So he is like completely legit. I will most definitely be buying from him in the future. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I don't think he purposely sent me this animal but after the unboxing I noticed this little critter on the macroalgae after asking around it turns out it's a sea cucumber <laughs> so I also have a sea cucumber in here so yeah that was a nice surprise <laughs> and for those of you who are wondering about that little tiny brittle star that I got like accidentally it's still around I still have it except I never see it I only see it every now and then when I'm like doing maintenance in here. Yeah, it hasn't really grown much. I guess it has grown a little bit. Like nothing too drastic. But after seeing these new guys, like I'm wondering how old these guys are. Because I've had the other one for like 8 months now and um, it hasn't grown like dramatically. So I wonder how old these guys are. Like how many years have they been around? <laughs> So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up and drop a beautiful comment down below. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, make sure that you do so like right now. Girl, it is down there. The red button down there, click it. <laughs> and make sure you have your notifications turned on. 
because I don't have an upload schedule. I kind of just randomly upload throughout the week. And if you like my shirt, then you know where to get it. Ow, I hit my nail. <laughs> I hit my nail. <laughs> Bye.